Hi, my name is Tom Chick. I'm here to demo the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. Uh, this isn't a review. My feeling is that uh, a review shouldn't include just a discussion of gameplay mechanics or descriptions. Uh, there are far more important things to talk about in reviews. However, a video like this, I'm just going to show you what a game of Pathfinder the Adventure Card Game plays like. Uh, so, a quick introduction as to what we are looking at, in case you're new to the series. Uh, Paizo has this Pathfinder license, which, as far as I can tell, is just Dungeons & Dragons, but with a different name. Uh, I could be corrected on that. But it's their, their fantasy IP, I guess. And this adventure card game is a standalone tabletop game using, it, you know, it's just fantasy stuff. Uh, now, let's look. I, I would show you the box here, but one of the things, one of the, the primary things you need to know about this game, once you start playing it, it will always, always, always be stored horizontally. You'll see why in a minute. If you ever see one of your friends like picking it up to look at the back of the box, stop them! Stop them! They're going to mess everything up. Uh, here's, here's what it looks like on the inside. Now, actually, I should tell you guys, so this is Pathfinder Adventure card game, Mummy's Mask. There have been uh, four what are called adventure sets. This began with a set called Rise of the Rune Lords. After that was R Wrath of the Righteous. Rise, yeah, Wrath of the Righteous. Nope, sorry. Rise of the Rune Lords, then Skull and Shackles. It's the pirate-themed one. Then Rise of the Righteous, which I think was about uh, uh, demons. And now Mummy's Mask which is uh, an Egyptian setting. Uh, and you may wonder, should I go back and start with Rise of the Rune Lords? No, no, just jump straight ahead to Mummy's Mask. Uh, it's not like there's any storyline that you need to worry about. Uh, even some of the characters are, are carried forward. You might as well start new in uh, the Mummy's Mask adventure set. Now, if you could find an earlier one for a better price, that's fine. But just keep in mind, Mummy's Mask is the latest as far as the rules refinements uh, and the gameplay systems that have been ironed out. Rise of the Rune Lords had some rough patches, uh, and they've since been smoothed out very nicely in Mummy's Mask. So the reason that you're going to have to store this horizontally is, once you open it, all of the cards live loosely in here. Now, when you first buy the game, it comes, all of the cards are shrink-wrapped and they're just stacked in here. And there are all of these empty trays here in the insert. Now, I have pimped mine out by labeling each section. This does not come this way. Uh, there is in the rules uh, a sort of a guideline for how everything gets stored. Let's see, is that right? Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to remember as you're going because a lot of times you need to draw something, put something back in without knowing what you're taking or where you're putting something. Uh, you wouldn't know when you start, but there is a kind of a flow for how these are arranged. Uh, but it takes some playing before you can really appreciate that. It goes from monsters to barriers and then down here to, uh, let's see, does it go? Yeah, and then weapons, spells, armor, you don't need to know that. Uh, suffice to say, once you've played a few times, you will definitely have an easier time navigating what right now looks like just a bunch of randomly arranged cards. Uh, these are the, the roughly 500 cards you get when you buy the base games. Each adventure set begins with a $60 base game. Uh, included in that base game is the first, sin no, pat, no, yeah, oh, I get so confused. Paths, adventures. Uh, the base set includes the first adventure. There are six, I believe, six adventures per set. Uh, an adventure comes in a separate deck like this, a separate box uh, with separately wrapped cards. You're not supposed to open these until you get to them. You begin with the basic adventure. You play through that and then you go to the first adventure. In this case, it's it's called the Half Dead City and that's included with a base set. The ensuing five adventures, two, three, four, five, and six, each cost $20. Furthermore, there is a $20, what's called a character add-on deck, which just adds a couple of characters and it adds support for uh, up to six players. Otherwise, this is a game for one to four players. Uh, or, as I like to call it, uh, solitaire game. It's cooperative. You could play with up to four players. Uh, alternatively, and this is how I prefer it, you can just play it as a solitaire game. 
very much like uh, in the same vein as, as keeping an ongoing campaign in, say, Kingdom Death Monster or Gloomhaven, uh, that sort of thing. This is exactly that kind of gameplay. So looking here at the base set, uh, you keep all of the cards out here, and as you progress through sets, you then bring in Adventure 2, 3, 4, 5, and finally 6. You will play them in that order. Uh, the trays, the, the insert is arranged so that everything can live in the box like that. And I am now, oh, the character box. Let's see, I've already screwed it up. This is the one, no, they're right. And that's how everything lives for me. So if someone were to pick this up and turn it over, oh my god, all of your meticulously arranged cards, and some of it is super specific, these are the characters as you develop them. Uh, the, the cards in each of these areas is super important because these are the cards that you've earned over successive playthroughs for those characters. So to give you a sense for the organization within each adventure, an adventure is comprised of multiple scenarios. This right here is the card for Mummy's Mask in general, and it includes the six adventures as well as the basic adventure. The basic adventure is Cross the Pharaoh's Land, and it consists of these six scenarios. Wait, five scenarios. When you play a scenario, this is basically the arrangement. The adventure path or set, the current adventure, the current scenario. You do these scenarios, you are then finished with this adventure, then you move on to the second one. In this case, Half Dead City, which is included with Mummy's Mask, and here are the scenarios. Uh, these are played non-linearly, by the way. You choose the order that you do them in. Uh, so if you were to take Mummy's Mask, the set, Half Dead City, the first adventure after the basic one. Choose which of these you wanted to start with. Say you were starting with Akhentepi's Legacy. Uh, and then the card tells you which locations are involved based on the player count. In my situation, I'm playing with four players, so these locations would all be set out on the table. And this little chart right here tells you what cards go into the location. Each location is a deck of cards. In the case, for instance, of the Towering Obelisk, we would randomly draw two monsters, two barriers, one weapon, no spells, oh sorry, two spells, no armor, no items, one ally, and one blessing. We would shuffle those cards up and put them in here. Furthermore, each deck has uh, a main bad guy. You might think of it as a boss. And what you're trying to do in the course of any given game is track down the main, main bad guy. Uh, the nomenclature is the villain is the main bad guy, the henchmen are the sub-bosses. So it's all about using your characters and their cards to search through these locations, doing some deck management, uh, dealing with weapons and attacks and spells and magical items, uh, special rules, uh, all in pursuit of the villain for that scenario. You beat the scenario, you get a reward, you play the next scenario, which will include different, sometimes overlapping, locations you build the decks, and so on. So uh, that is the overview of the Pathfinder Adventure card game. What we're going to do now, and uh, you know, stick with it as long as you like, is we're just going to play through an entire game, uh, and I'll give you a sense for what the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is like in the Adventure Pathfinder Adventure card game. So let's go over to, uh, it is the third scenario in the basic introductory adventure for Mummy's Mask. Let's go take a look. The first blessing, normally you put the blessings in a discard pile and the manual recommends pointing it towards whichever player is taking his or her turn, but I'm the only player here. So to help me keep track of them, I put them underneath the active character's token. So Blessing of the Ancients is good. That'll let us uh, recycle any other uh, Blessings of the Ancients. We've got two of them in play. I say in play, uh, in player's hands. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. She has a hand size of six. I'm constantly forgetting to give her, oh, nice, give her her full hand. Uh, all right, we are looking for the Mirage, which is the main villain uh, in this scenario. 
uh, it's not much of a villain, it's, it's more of an obstacle, I guess. Normally you fight a boss type character. Uh, here we just have to beat the mirage, get past it, uh, and on the way to the mirage there are multiple acid pools that we have to contend with. So uh, let's look for the acid pools. We have to close all the locations. One of the unique rules, or the unique rule for this scenario, which is called desiccated delirium, is that we can't temporarily close a location. That's uh, normally how you corner one of the, the, the villains that you're looking for, is you find him in his deck and then the other uh, characters close locations so the villain can't run off, and then you fight him and you kill him and you've won. Here, the rule is we can't temporarily close locations, so we have to find the acid pool in each location, defeat it, and then close the location. Alternatively, burn through all the cards, uh, which is probably going to be difficult given the timer, which is our blessing deck. Uh, we have 30 turns to do that. Uh, so we have Drelm, a half-orc cleric. I did not know that orcs could be clerics. Uh, in the Shifting Dunes, uh, let's just go ahead and explore a flash freeze. Oh wait, let's see. Uh, the first thing you have to do in the Shifting Dunes at the start of your turn, shuffle any armors into your deck. Uh, it's not as bad as discarding them, but it just means you won't get them that turn. The idea being, in the Shifting Dunes, it is way too hot to wear armor. You can't wear armor and run around the Shifting Dunes. You have to strip down to the bare essentials. All right, so, putting uh, to maximize space, I am keeping each character's deck under their card here. All right, so Flash Freeze to acquire an Intelligence or Craft of 5. Uh, Drelm's Intelligence is simply a D6. Let's see if he gets it. He does not get the Flash Freeze. It goes back into the box. Now, it's important that you put things in the box as you're playing because later on you might have to draw something out of the box and you want the distribution to be such that the cards that are supposed to be in the box are in the box. Uh, let's see. I am going to use this to keep exploring. Um, discard this to examine the top of your location deck, then you may explore uh, after you play it. If the top card of the blessing the disc if the top card of the blessings discard pile has a basic trait, which this does, we recharge instead of discard. So we examine first, which will leave us vulnerable to triggers, which is one of the new rules, the new uh, gameplay effects in Mummy's Mask. We are examining it and we have found a hyena and triggered it. Normally a hyena, we do a combat check of nine. When you examine this card, you are dealt, oh, you are dealt two combat damage, then encounter this card. Uh, we used to have armor that we could use to absorb that combat damage. Now we don't. So uh, let's discard, I don't want to discard the Kukri. Uh, the two combat damage, I don't have any other way to prevent it, do I? Uh, no. So there goes our elemental treaty, which would have been helpful, and this blessing, which would have also been helpful. Uh, okay, we're examining it. Uh, we now put it back. Uh, we are now going to cycle this. And now we may explore, and let's fight a hyena with a combat difficulty of nine. Uh, Drelm's combat is a D melee is a D10 plus two. Uh, now, I have appropriated these little bits and bobs from other games to help me track stuff as I'm playing. Uh, you get really spoiled by the digital version of Pathfinder, so it, because it, it will track bonuses, it'll even give you the percentage chance that you will succeed at any given check as you fiddle around and change different dice and try different cards. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm using the blue cubes to represent a positive bonus and the orange red ones to represent a negative bonus. So I get a d6 plus, what is it, plus two for my melee check. Uh, for my combat check, I am going to reveal the Kukri so it uses your melee plus a d4. If proficient with weapons, you may additionally recharge to add another 2d4. Now, is that a bit overkill for hitting a 9? Not really, because these are just d4s and d6s. So we're going to do that. We're going to recharge this. And we need a 9 or higher, and we get plus 2. Uh, six, seven, okay, then we got it. So we killed the hyena, aka banished it, uh, and that's Drum's turn. Uh, I am now going to fill up his hand to five. 
that we're gonna have to then we're gonna have to shuffle two of those cards back into the deck at the start of our next turn because of it's really hot in the shifting dunes not only can you not wear crocodile skin armor you can't even carry a crocodile skin shield it's too hot for that glad to have the elemental treaty the cure we don't need at this point this is great for him uh, normally well, one of his special abilities, I guess, as a half-orc, uh, is that he always recharges Blessings of Abadar. I don't know who Abadar is. Probably an orc god. Uh, so, we are moving down this way. Uh, this is the player order. Not this. Don't be fooled by this. Uh, so, uh, Demiel is next. He is an elf alchemist. The Blessing of Phrasma doesn't help us much. <clears throat> Let's see. What are we dealing with? The camel we can use for... Uh, discard to explore. Discard, okay, so we can use that to continue exploring. I think what's going on with this scenario, which which I have failed multiple times, uh, is it's teaching you the, uh, how to burn through the decks using the examine ability. Uh, so I need to remember to take advantage of that. All right, did I draw this in the right place? Oh, shoot a monkey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I accidentally drew it from her deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, I've cheated. Uh, so I know there's a scarab swarm in there. Let's just go ahead and say that I was here. Uh, my bad. Uh, you guys have to watch me on this stuff. All right, a scarab swarm. Uh, is a bunch of little bugs and their combat check is six. However, if you don't use fire, their combat check is basically 10. Uh, if I'd examined them, they would have triggered, which would have been uh, a point of damage. Poison, a point of poison damage. Poison damage in this particular uh, adventure, remember a scenario is a subset of an adventure, uh, poison damage in this adventure afflicts you with the curse of poisoning which basically reduces your hand size we don't want that uh, we want to minimize all poison damage otherwise we will get a curse of poisoning uh, all right so i've screwed up and accidentally explored in thorn scrub uh, you can't evade something that has poison i'm not really evading in this game uh, okay him being a an alchemist means he gets to use these little potions um and basically not burn them. He discards them, which means they can be healed back into his deck and then into his hand rather than just banishing them. Normally, potions like this are one-shot abilities. For an alchemist, uh, you can, the potion can come back again. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and use this. So for the combat check, you can use dexterity or range skill. His uh, range skill is a d10 plus two. You know what, did I screw up his? Yeah, I didn't give myself a D10 for uh, Drelm. I already screwed up two things. Uh, okay, so a D10 plus two. Uh, we are going to banish this. His ability, you may recharge uh, a check that invokes acid. Uh, what is it? No, oh, uh, when you would banish a card that has the alchem alchemical trait for its power, you may discard it instead. Uh, so we're going to discard that. 2d6 plus dexterity arranged. And we're going to need a 10 or higher. I think we're going to go with that. We could also... Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and cycle this simply because we don't need it in our hand yet. Uh, you may recharge a card um, to a check that involves acid or poison. Um, if it has the alchemical... All right, so you may recharge a card. We're going to recharge this one to add a d6. If the recharged card has the alchemical trait, add another d6. So this is a little bit of overkill against, uh, against a bunch of bugs, but we just want to cycle cards out of our hand anyway. All right, so a 10 or higher. All right, we've banished the Scarab Swarm. Uh, I am going to go ahead and not keep going on. Let's see for combat check reveal. Uh, there's a lot of monsters in this scenario. Uh, I feel like a combat check plus a d6. Mm, let's not push our luck at this point. Uh, armor and a little dwarven clansman which will help us explore and uh, help us deal with things that have the trigger trait. All right, so that was Damiel's turn. We now go to Estra, who is a spiritualist. Good, a basic blessing. So we can recharge basic blessings. Where are they? Uh, instead of discard them. 
She has her ghost card. Uh, if you read her text on the back of her token, uh, you can find out that this ghost was her husband. Super sad. So she's a widow. Uh, all right, so she is going to explore at, uh, also at Thornscrub because I screwed up and had him accidentally explore there, whatever. Uh, no harm, no foul yet. Um, here we go. Let's see. Oh, she's got, on your turn, you may recharge a spell to examine the top two cards. Let's go ahead and recharge. Oh, I don't know. Let's recharge the acid jet. Now we're going to examine the top two cards here. Uh, we might get waylaid if there's a trigger effect. Uh, well, there we go, the Mirage. All right, so what this is going to do is move the Mirage. When you examine or encounter the Mirage, which we've just done, if any other location is open, they all are, shuffle it into a random other open location. So the good news is we now know where the Mirage is, and we can then focus on closing the other five locations uh, once it has moved. So it gets shuffled into a random other location. So let's roll a d6. One, two, three, four, five. We'll re-roll a six. That's, is that cocked? Yeah, that's cocked. So five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, the Mirage has gone over to the quarry. We had Amhotep working the quarry because in the quarry you get a plus three to uh, traits that have bludgeon and Amhotep has a bunch of staffs that all have bludgeon. All right, so the quarry is off limits. We're going to leave that alone and I'm now going to use this little mod to mark that, hey, the Mirage is here. Uh, okay, so that was examining one card. Let's now examine the second card. Blessing of Wadjet. All right, so that's not encountering it. That's examining it, isn't it? Uh, if it's undead, you can encounter it. Uh, at this point in the adventure, there's very few, there are very few undead cards. There are a couple of like, uh, I think they're called blasphemous undead clerics. Uh, but otherwise, there aren't a lot of undead cards. I'm assuming that's going to change as the adventure progresses. Uh, otherwise, Estra is not going to be super useful. All right. So now for her regular exploration, it is a blessing of Wadjet. What do you know? A divine of five, and she can put it in her hand uh, and also keep it. What does this one do? Adds checks to acquire boons. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, we want this. Uh, her divine uh, is a d12 plus two. So there's the plus two, roll the d12, and we get this, and this goes into her hand. Uh, all right, let's see. She does have a basic blessing, but that won't. Discard this card to explore your location. No. Uh, I think she is done. What is this? Reveal this card. Oh, Discard this card to examine the top two cards of your location deck and put them back in any order. Let's go ahead and use this. We're going to examine the top two cards and put them back in any order. Triggers. Well, okay, that's terrible. Uh, all right, an enchanter who does damage before and after combat. So we want to be armored up before we deal with her. And this is super annoying. So it's a trap. It has all kinds of traits. It actually only requires a five or higher. Now, nobody in this group has acrobatics or survival, which is what you could use to overcome the toxic geyser. So instead, we just have to use our dexterity or wisdom stats. Plenty of people here have dexterity and wisdom. Uh, all right, so first we will deal with, I guess, the Enchantress, who has some armor. Uh, he's going to have to discard that. All right, so it'll come back around to him, and, she, and he will deal with the Enchantress. He can discard this to reduce the damage. Let's see, what does he have to fight her? Not a lot. I think we are going to go ahead and fight her with this clean Venom. Uh, we can also, let's see, you may discard a spell to reduce damage. Eh, I don't like mandatory damage. All right, well, let's put her on top. Now, my interface mod for, in the digital game, when you have examined a card, when you've looked at a card, uh, you can always go back and look at what it is again. It doesn't force you to remember it, uh, and it indicates that, hey, you know what this card is, dummy. Look at it again. Here, I'm going to indicate that by turning the cards upside down. 
So we'll put the enchanter on top. She's really an enchantress. Uh, she's an eight combat and this thing on bottom. Hey, you know, let's do it the other way around. So he's gonna deal with this first and then the enchantress next. All right, there we go. Uh, so we could burn these cards if we wanted to keep exploring. Uh, I don't think we do. I really like this one. Is she ready to fight the uh, Enchantress? I don't know, combat of eight. I don't want her to take the damage. Let's just do it, that's fine, we're doing that. Okay, we're filling her hand up. Oh, there's that guy. Uh, okay, and now we're drawing a blessing for Amhotep. Uh, blessing of the Ancients is good. We're not gonna explore here. We know the um, Mirage is there. We could have her come deal with the Enchantress, which we put on top. Uh, she doesn't have anything to absorb damage though, does she? No. So let's wait till somebody has armor to shrug off the Enchantress's mandatory force damage. <clears throat> so let's see, where will she go? Uh, now, I, I could go to the Howling Sands, but it says at the start of your turn, recharge any cards that have the cold trait. Uh, Amhotep has in her deck, at least I think it's in there, a uh, Staff of Frost. Uh, I don't want to get that knocked out of my hand, so we're not gonna be running around in the Howling Sands. Uh, let's have her go to the Shifting Dunes. One of the things you want to look for when you're deciding who goes where is who is capable of doing the uh, when closing option. Uh, actually, does she have an item she can burn? No. Uh, so Shifting Dunes just means summon a, a big old snake and, and defeat it, and then you can close the location. So uh, let's go to the Shifting Dunes. She's got a nice staff, a decent spell. She can hang out with Drelm. Uh, all right, is there anything I want to do before I explore? Uh, by the way, I'm going to do this. One of her abilities is to discard a card to change a, di a check result by two points. So I'm going to do that to just remind myself that, hey, she has this ability to change a die roll by two. Uh, and uh, discarding spells to power staffs. All right, here we go. We're just going to explore. A spell dagger, I would like this. Arcane of four, her arcane is a d10 plus two. All right, this goes in her hand. Uh, let's see, because this will be recharged instead of discarded, we're going to play uh, recharge it, which means examine the top card of the deck and we may then explore. All right, evil eye, this is terrible. It's going to trigger. Uh, this is a curse. Uh, we have to make, we can defeat it with an arcane roll, which looks like something we can do, it looks doable. Uh, when you examine this card, suffer a scourge and then banish this card. So unfortunately, we don't even get to encounter it. So we just suffer a scourge and then we banish the card. Uh, so uh, let's see, did we have, no, we have nothing that helps us. There's that little dwarf. This guy helps us against checks on cards with triggers, but we don't even do a check. So uh, we take a Scourge. Uh, in this scenario, a Scourge is a D4. Where does it say that? The Scourge die is a D4. This is the Scourge table here. Uh, and I've put all the Scourges under here. They're all curses. Let's roll a D4 and see what Amhotep is afflicted with. A one is a curse of poisoning. So for each curse of poisoning a character has, uh, they recharge their hand down uh, one point. While displayed, after you reset your hand, recharge a random card. So this is basically going to recharge her, uh, reduce her hand size from five to six, which frankly isn't that bad. I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, because I, ironically, and there's a weird thing with the damage modeling here, uh, the lower your hand size, the less vulnerable you are to getting killed because you only die when you can't refill your hand. So if your hand size, oh, well, actually that doesn't help her because her hand size is still six, right? Oh, very clever poisoning. All right, it doesn't help her because she still has to draw up to six cards. All right, poison sucks. All right, so she has the Curse of Poisoning. I'm going to put that there. Uh, what's my interface mod? We'll do that. Uh, 
Uh, and that was examining uh, using this, using the blessing of the ancients. This is now banished. And after we examine, we can explore, which we're going to do. A Tomb Raider. We will acquire him on a diplomacy check. She is very, well, she's kind of diplomatic. It's a D6 plus two. There's our plus two. Here's our D6. On a four or higher, the Tomb Raider joins us. He does join us. And we can discard this card to explore the location. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's burn through the shifting dunes here. All right, there is our acid pool. Uh, okay, well, we have options. All right, so to deal with an acid pool, the check is a nine. A nine is nothing, uh, a nine is a, a relatively, so basically fours and fives are super easy checks. Uh, sevens are getting up there, uh, eights are eh. Once you start hitting the nine, 10, 11, those are the more difficult checks. So acid pools are hard to deal with. Uh, let's see, the people who best deal with acid pools are Drelm and Damiel, for reasons that we'll hopefully see in a little bit. Uh, let's see, Drelm being present, that doesn't help. No, a near check. Uh, all right, so her options, we've got to make intelligence, craft, wisdom, or survival check. Let's see, her intelligence is a D10, and nobody, as I mentioned before, has, uh, well, actually, uh, Damiel has craft, nobody has survival. She doesn't have craft, does she? No. All right, so her intelligence check is just going to be a D10. We need a nine or higher on a D10. That doesn't look very likely to happen. So what options do we have to improve that? And by the way, if we defeat this, we then summon and defeat the henchman Giant Sand Eel, which is a combat check of 11. Okay, so let's look at what blessings we can play. Uh, blessing of the Ancients would mean any basic but other Blessing of the Ancients would be recycled instead of recharged. Oh, actually, this is good. So blessings of the elements. The elements are invoked here because an acid pool is, of course, an acid element. It invokes, which is another new gameplay dynamic in Mummy's Mask. Any time that a card that you are checking against or that you're using for a check has a trait, you consider that, tra that trait invoked. So a blessing of the elements lets us recharge this card to add one die to any check that invokes elements, including acid. So she will recharge this to add another die. In this case, it is a D10. Where's my other D10? It's right there. Am I missing out there? There's a D10. The D10s and D8s look super uh, alike to me. Uh, all right, let's see what else because I'm still not quite happy. I need a nine or higher. I'm not comfortable with my odds. I'd like to get one more die, die in there. This blessing of Abadar, <clears throat> discard to add two die to any check to defeat a barrier. Uh, an acid pool is a barrier. A barrier is a type of card. Uh, so you would normally uh, discard this, but Drelm, being a half-orc, when you would discard a blessing that has the Abadar trait to add dice to a check, you may recharge it instead. Let's go ahead and recharge this. Spending a lot of good cards uh, to defeat this acid pool, but I think it's worth it because it'll close down one of our locations. That's our overall goal here. How many cards do we have left there? We had four cards left. So that adds two dice. So this plus reroll one of the, the tens, uh, and there we go. We easily got that. Ooh, a zero. That's terrible. No, that's a 10. So actually, just for giggles, a 25. Oh, good Lord. 34. We only needed a nine. We got a 34. Uh, we defeated the heck out of that acid pool. So the acid pool goes back in the box. And we may now check to close the location, which means summon and defeat a giant sand eel. I know where he is. I actually have dealt with him in a previous scenario. He's a slippery dude. So summon just means bring the card out of the box. If you defeat it, it doesn't go back into play. Ignore the text, put it back in the box. Normally the sand eel uh, slithers away, kind of like the mirage. But in this case, because he's summoned, we fight him and we're done. So he's got a combat check of 11. Uh, let's see what we can do with that. You want to use this for your combat check. Reveal this card to use your dexterity or range skill. Uh, that's not something that we want to do. Yeah, it's just a D6. So this actually doesn't help her much. On your combat check, when you play a spell that has the attack trait, discard this card to add a D4, which is what I think we'll be doing, because we're going to emulate the giant sand eel. So for your combat check, 
discard this card, and in the case of magic users, which she is, she's a magus, not a mage, a magus, uh, we'll be able to check to recharge that instead of discard it. So we're doing an arcane check plus 2d4s. Her arcane is, uh, where are we? Arcane is a d10 plus 2. And since we are using Immolate, we add 2d4s. Now we need to get an 11. The Spell Dagger, which I don't really need, uh, on your combat check, when you play a spell that has the attack trait, discard it to add a d4. Let's go ahead and get another d4 out there. Now I kind of like that, but after playing this card, oh, let's see. Doesn't she have some other thing she can do? What does the Flame Staff do? Recharge it and discard a spell, which actually recharges the spell, which I think we're going to get to do anyway. Uh, it adds a D8. You know, and what is this one? This is just punching things. What does the Shock Lizard do? Uh, recharge to add a D4 electricity. Uh, and this is great, this Blessing of Bastet. We're going to hang on to that. It's going to let us uh, re-roll. And remember, by the way, we can add two to our check. Uh, I think actually we're okay with this. No, okay, sorry, let's back up. The Flame Staff, this is an item and not a weapon. For your combat check, recharge this card and discard a spell to use your Arcane or Divine skill plus a D8. This counts as uh, playing a spell. Now, we won't get to use the Spell Dagger, but I'm okay with that. All right, so we are recharging this, and now we're discarding a spell. However, one of Amhotep's special abilities. When you would discard a spell for a power on a card that has the staff trait, you may recharge it instead. So we are going to recharge this. Uh, so that is arcane plus a d8. Our arcane is a d10 plus 2 plus a d8. Now we need an 11. We can adjust the result by discarding a card by 2. So basically we need a 9. Uh, we can't use that. I'm going to go ahead and recharge the Shock Lizard to add a D4 and electricity. Now, if we had Blessings of the Elements lying around, we could recharge those. Uh, we are recharging this. It goes back into her deck. And I am okay with this roll to get a 9. Now, by the way, if we don't defeat this, we don't close the Shifting Dunes. We are going to have to keep uh, dealing with them. All right, uh, an 11 or higher, uh, easily. All right, the giant sand eel goes back into the deck. Keep things alphabetical, makes them easier to find. All right. Uh, and this is now closed. All of this stuff goes back in the box. Uh, when closed, there's no effect. Is it cheating to look through the cards that didn't come up? Uh, I don't know. I hate looking through here and seeing things like, oh, I could have gotten this great item, or, oh, I just missed encountering a quicksand bunyip, or something like that. Uh, however, you do have to look to put the cards back in the box, so here we go. Uh, eh, nothing great. That would have been nice to have. All right, so we missed that spell. We didn't have to fight a caravan raider. We can't recruit a Daba ally. And we didn't have to deal with alchemical gas. Uh, and that is her turn. There's nothing else she, she can do there. So we refill her hand to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now, as per the curse of poisoning, we are going to... Uh, Recharge a random card for each curse. So we're going to roll a d6, and then counting from left to right, that's the one that we will recharge. Oh, there's her frost staff. Five, that's this blessing of the elements. And that is Amhotep's turn. So basically, every well, basically, so at this point, everybody has at this point everybody has gotten to go once. Uh, if I look here at the the blessing, my little blessing interface, I see okay, everybody's taken his or her turn. Let's now slide these out and put them in the blessing discard pile. I don't think there's anything in this game, in in this particular scenario that I've seen yet, where the order of the blessing deck matters. But just to be safe, 
we will go ahead and discard them in the order that they were drawn, which I can remember by looking at the order of the cards here. All right, we start over, and now it is Drelm's turn again. Blessing of Ra does not help us. No point sticking around in the closed, shifting dunes. Uh, it's the Enchantress up here, right? Uh, he has the armor, plenty of armor to shrug off the Enchantress, but he doesn't have any stuff to fight with. Shoot, so it would just be a melee, a strength plus two. What is the Enchantress? An eight. Uh, strength plus two is a d10. I'm not confident in being able to get an eight there. We do, however, need to get rid of some of these. Uh, now, we don't want to fight her and just have her, uh, and, and then have her not get, we don't want to fight her and not defeat her because then she'll get shuffled back into the deck. We've basically wasted an action. So, uh, who can help us here? Damio can actually discard potions. Did I not draw up to my full hand size? I did not. This could matter. He can discard potions to help other people's fights. So maybe we'll get a potion. He does have a potion. Good. Who else did I not draw up? Oh, did I use a... Shoot. Did I just cheat? And Okay. I, I think I did not. I think it's okay. I didn't draw my hand up. I need to remember I constantly forget to draw my hand size up to full. And she used a blessing, right? Shoot. All right. Well, I'll just have to remember. Uh, actually, so let's go for it because I know that he's got this potion he can add. Uh, you can recharge a card that has the alchemical trait to add D4 uh, to a combat check at your location. We need an 8. He's going to get a D10 plus 2. Uh, let's go ahead and be risky. It's a little crowded over here. It's Thorn Scrub. I feel, oh, you know, why does he have the Scarab Buckler? She, he's not supposed, what's going on here? This is supposed to be in this deck. You know what, is that what happened? Is the cards, one, two, I think that is what happened. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I've all, oh, 15, yeah. Right? All right, so this actually should not have been drawn. Let's shuffle this back in. Completely screwing things up. All right, there. Uh, I think uh, Daniel's buckler uh, strayed over into Drelm's inventory. All right, so did I then not draw Drelm up? Or did I use a blessing? I don't know. I'll have to, I'll just deal with it. Uh, all right, let's come over here. Let's see, recharge this to reduce Barry, Barry to shuffle cards. So this can be used for healing, uh, for adding dice to a check, to your check that invokes poison, uh, recharge it to reduce damage. Let me play, all right. Shoot, that stupid enchantress is really annoying. Uh, but I think a D8, I don't have any blessings. I could deal with this. Discard to add two to, to acquire a boon. No. This blessing of Bastet lets us re-roll. Shoot. He's, he's just in bad shape all around not having a weapon. All right, let's go for it. You know what? Let's live dangerously. Uh, he's going to, he's moving here. He is exploring. He's encountering an enchantress. Before uh, you act, the enchanter deals one force damage. Uh, I will reduce that. Oh, actually, can I, I can't reduce force damage? Recharge this to reduce acid combat fire damage. Oh, I can't. Force damage is some weird magical nonsense. Uh, well, okay, well, we will, there's our force damage, ouch. So we need an eight or higher. Uh, if you don't have a weapon, you can use your melee or your strength in battle. Uh, his melee is a D10 plus two. These are not great odds. Do I want to burn a blessing? Uh, actually, I don't think I have any blessings that will help. This will let me uh, do rerolls and exams. I think that's it for me. I think that's all I can manage. Uh, Check. All right, here we go. Let's see if I get lucky. 
Oh, one point away. Isn't that how it always works? Well, the good news is I only take one point of damage. Uh, and I will recharge this to reduce the damage to zero. She gets shuffled back in the deck and we will no longer know uh, where this uh, trap is, the toxic geyser, but we do know that it's in there. All right, that was a terrible turn all around. Okay, we are going to now draw his hand. Oh, should I actually use this? You know what, I'm going to. Uh, so display this card next to your location while displayed elemental damage is reduced by one. Let's do that. Uh, one of the interface issues is there's no way to indicate that this card belonged to Drelm. You just have to remember. All right, so I now deal my hand up to five. Good, weapons. Good, nice basic blessing. Don't like how low that deck is, but that's okay. We've got healing. He's got his cure spell, and, uh, and it's not that bad. All right, that is Drelm's turn. Uh, Damiel's turn. Everybody keep your hands apart. Keep your hands out of each other's hands. All right, uh, Damiel will now explore at the Thorn Scrub location, which has an elemental treaty in place. There's our Toxic Geyser. So we defeat this um, with a dexterity check of five is his best bet. Let's see, what's his wisdom? Yeah, of course, a dexterity check is a d10. We need a five or higher. Uh, how can we make this a better uh, how can we make better odds for this? Uh, you may recharge a card to add a d6 to your check that invokes the acid or poison trait. Uh, Toxic Geyser invokes both. If the card you recharge has the alchemical trait, you may add another d6. So this here, this Scarab Buckler, has the alchemical trait. We're going to recharge it to add, what is it, two d6s? Oh, no, no, it's right here to add two d6s. Actually, what, what if we just used its ability? I think its ability just lets us, right, heal, recharge to reduce damage, uh, bury to add a bunch of dice to swarm or poison. Oh, we could bury this to add two d8, but we'd rather recharge it. So there are two d6s. Now we need a five or higher. Uh, this should be easy, right? Famous last words. Oh, <laughs> yikes, is that a one or a seven? That's a one. All right, well, we got it even higher than a five. All right, so we got past the toxic geyser. Let's see, no mandatory effects, right? No. Uh, do we want to use the Pomet Clansman? Discard this to explore your location. I think we do. What's the camel do? Discard this to explore your location. Uh, during this exploration, add a D6 to survival checks. We'll go ahead and do this. Simply because uh, he can be recharged to add a D6 to any checks that have, to any cards that have the trigger trait. So we are discarding this. We're going to explore again. Dry quicksand. <laughs> uh, dry quicksand also uses a new gameplay dynamic in Mummy's Mask, and that is shuffling your token, which is this card, into the location. And that's what dry quicksand does. This sits here by the location. Damiel gets shuffled into these, what are they, five cards, one of which is a uh, poison, uh, an acid pool. And he can't move until his uh, card is uh, examined or encountered. Now at this location, he can still explore, but any, um, I think he has to evade any monsters that he uh, meets, I believe. All right, so uh, let's just shuffle this under the deck, under the, shuffle this under the table. All right, and he's not on top. Now, the, hard, the difficult thing is not to accidentally do that and then see how far down the deck he is. I'll try to be careful. All right, so there's quicksand. There's an elemental treaty. There's a lot of stuff going on at Thorn Scrub. A lot of people hanging out. It's very busy there, uh, right? Uh, so I could keep exploring, but I think I'm going to hang on to this 
and let the other people try to pluck him out of the quicksand. Because there are a bunch of monsters in, in the uh, Thorn Scrub. All of these locations actually tend to have a bunch of monsters. This is a combat heavy scenario. So rather than explore, find a monster and then waste an action because he, he's in quicksand and can't fight it, let's move on. Oh, and I don't think I drew a blessing for him, did I? Yep, so he had this in effect during his turn. So we'll put that there just to show that was his blessing. All right, now we draw, oh, we draw his hand up. Good, I'm happy with those. Uh, and now we go on to Estra's turn. Here is her blessing. On your turn, you may recharge a spell to examine the top two cards of your location deck. Uh, I don't want to recharge this because it would leave her a bit vulnerable uh, if she encounters a monster. Uh, so let's just explore and try not to reveal where the elf alchemist is. All right, her. Hello, my old friend. All right, so first we take a f one force damage uh, on air. When you would discard this card as damage, recharge it instead. I don't want to do this because he's super valuable for helping her get cards out of her spells, out of her discard pile. And if we recharge him just for one point of damage and put him at the bottom of the deck, uh, she's a bit vulnerable without her, her ghost husband. So let's just burn one of these cards uh, and guess the Pomet Clansman. There he goes for, for damage. Now we have a combat check of eight. Clinging Venom. For your combat check, discard this card. Hopefully banish because she is a, she a mages? A spiritualist. Uh, to use your arcane or divine plus a d8. Her divine is a d12 plus two. There is our plus two. There is our d12. By the way, this d20 uh, is not used in any play. I think it's only used in the Wrath of the Righteous Adventure set. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of this. There. Uh, so uh, discard for, yeah, for your combat check, uh, divine plus a d8. Um, and here's our d8 plus our d12. All right, is this enough to get us an eight or higher? I think it is. Uh, and then after playing it, we can make a check uh, six, which is relatively easy to recharge it. Uh, am I pushing my luck? I think I can do it. Let's go for it. Easily. All right. Uh, after you act, the enchanter deals one fire damage. All right. She, this doesn't go into effect, right? Because we immediately put this back in the box. The after, oh no, you know what? We don't resolve this. So the turn order goes before you act, effects fire off, which is this. You then make your check. Uh, then if it has multiple checks, you make your multiple checks. Then you execute the after you act effects, then you resolve the check, which in this case means manners. So we deal one, she takes one fire damage. Uh, oh, shoot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, force damage. We don't have anything to deal with force damage, but the elemental treaty, um, while displayed, reduce acid, cold, electricity, fire, and poison damage dealt to characters by one. Fire damage gets reduced. So take that, enchanter. All right. Uh, I could, let's see, discard to examine the top card of your location. You may then explore during this exploration, add a die for the check to acquire boons. I think we'll save this for the Caravanserai, which has a bunch of uh, items in it. Oh, let's now see. Uh, we need to make a divine check of six, which is a D12 plus two, and we recharge this instead of discard it. Now, if we'd had to discard it, if we discarded it on air in one of his abilities, is he goes on top of her deck and then a recharged, uh, a discarded spell gets put back in her hand. Uh, and then she will, of course, because he's on top of the deck, she will then draw him when she resets her hand. Uh, so Onair, basically, he's an undead. He's a, he's a ghost husband who goes off in, I guess, the ethereal plane and brings back spells, <laughs> revives them after they've been cast. All right, let's reset her hand up to five cards. 
Uh, okay, they all look good. I found this person last time. What does an Osirian ancestor do? Display it. While displayed, you may recharge this card to examine the top card of your location, then put it on the top or bottom. While displayed, you may recharge this card to add a D6. So I can do this when it's not my turn, right? I'm a little unclear on this, but I'm pretty sure that characters, any, any card that says do an action without specifying on your check or during your turn or at your location, I think the game is pretty wide open as far as when you can play cards and do these display this card actions. So I think we're going to do this. While displayed, you may recharge this card to examine the top card of your location. Now here's the question. Does the act of displaying interrupt resetting my hand? Can I display in the course of resetting my hand and then go ahead and draw an additional card. I'm going to guess no that you, uh, as a matter of fact, I think the rules are pretty clear. They say um, finish an action before you go on to another one. So we're going to finish resetting our hand and now we're going to display this card. You may recharge this card to examine so she can examine. While displayed, I can recharge it to add a d6 to your check against stuff. Uh, so the Osirian Ancestor is good at fighting outsiders or undead. Uh, let's display that. All right, that was uh, Estra's turn. We now go to Amhotep, who's hanging around in the Shifting Dunes. Uh, Blessing of Bastet. Uh, after you play this card, if it matches the top card of the Blessing discard pile, which it does, you may search your deck for a non-Blessing card that has the gambling trait and add it to your hand. I don't think I have any cards with the gambling trait. Uh, I do know if I defeat this scenario, Desiccated Delirium, one of the rewards I get is a loot card that has the gambling trait. I don't have it yet, but when I have it, you can bet that it will go in the same deck as the Blessing of Bastet. All right, no point hanging out in the Shifting Dunes. Do we want to join the Thorn Scrub party? I do like this elemental treaty being here. And we want to get Damiel out of the stupid quicksand. So let's go over here. Uh, and we now, is there anything we want to use? Uh, the spell dagger we'll be able to discard. We've got plenty of staff actions. Acid. All right, no, we're just going to go ahead and straight up explore. Um, yep. A skeletal jackal, uh, immune to cold, mental, and poison. That doesn't matter, we'll be using acid. Immune to cold would have uh, um, come into play if she used her frost staff. If we have piercing or slashing, it's an 11 instead of an 8. Now, if Drelm had been fighting this with his long spear or kopesh, there would have been piercing and slashing involved. Fortunately, we have staffs involved and they bludgeon. Skeletal jackals are bludgeoned uh, more effectively than pierced or slashed. Okay, so let's see. I think we're just going to have to do a straight up spell cast. What else can we do? Recharge this card to allow a character to reroll a die. Discard to examine the top card of your location. All right, so we can recharge this cat, which we want to do to allow a character at your location to reroll one die. Oh, I like that. We're going to put another cube there to remind us of that. All right, so the spell we're going to cast is Acid Splash. It is the Arcane check plus a D6. Her Arcane is a D10 plus 2 plus the D6. We need an 8 or higher. We can reroll a die. We can also discard a card to add 2. Uh, I think we're going to go with that. Uh, even though Damiel is lost in quicksand, he can still play cards, he can still explore the location, he can still have encounters. Uh, what he can't do is move, and if he encounters any uh, banes in general or just monsters, uh, if he encounters those things, uh, I'll look that up, he has to evade them. So what that means is even though he's drowning in quicksand, he can throw a potion in to help her fight the skeletal jackal, which I think we're going to do. We need an eight or higher, but you know what? She can discard a card to add. She could recharge to reroll. Let's save this because it is super useful. And let's just try to get an eight. That is not an eight. Uh, even using our recharge ability will not, uh, even using our ability to add this. Oh no, that will. Four, five, six, 
Seven, eight. Oh, that would. Right, right, right. Okay. Let's uh, discard the spell dagger, oh, which I could have done in the first place to add a d4. Uh, and we're going to use that for her ability on your... On your check, after the roll, you may discard a card to add or subtract two. So there's four, five, six, seven, eight. And we defeated this fella. Um, let's see. I don't have... Do I want to discard to examine the top card of your location? If it's a Bane, encounter it. Uh and it may not be evaded. So I could burn this to have another encounter. Uh, I really like its reroll ability though. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. All right, we fill her hand up to six and then because she's poisoned, she randomly recharges one, five, six. All right, we roll a D6. Is that, I don't know, let's... A three. One, two, three. Blessing. All right, well, there goes our cat. We don't need that reminder anymore. Fortunately, it's just recharged. Poison apparently weakens you. It doesn't damage you. All right, we remove all of these blessings, and we start again with Drelm. Everyone's hanging out at Thornscrub because of that elemental treaty. Uh, I'm not worrying with the order of these at this point. Blessing of Wadjet is now our active blessing. Uh, didn't we have one of those? Yes. So, uh, after you play this card, if it matches the top card of the blessing discard pile, draw a card. So we want to use this this turn. Reveal it to add a d4. Discard it to add 2d8 to any check to acquire a boon. So whoever Wadjet is, he or she apparently likes you to get loot. Discard to examine the top card of your location. You may then explore. Um, I think we'll be doing that. But first, let's just do Drelm's regular exploration at Thorn Scrub. He's got plenty of weapons. He's got this, which we want to save until there's a basic blessing displayed. What does this guide do? Oh, right. Adds one die to certain checks. Uh, this is useful if we run in, when we run into the acid pool. Uh, no point using cure yet. All right, here we go. We're going to explore. Crocodile skin armor. I would love to take that. So constitution or fortitude. Nobody here has fortitude. So his constitution roll is just a d6. Two. Uh, if we really cared about this, we could burn. We could add two da. Oh, well, we can't because we already rolled for it. All right, that's fine. It didn't need it anyway. Uh, all right, now let's do this. Is it only you? Discard this card to examine the top card of the location. Then you may explore. Oh, shoot. All right, you can't use that for someone else. All right, so I think we're going to do this one. Uh, discard this card to examine the top card of your location deck. Then you may explore your location. Let's do that. We're going to examine this. And it's not a boon, so we won't be able to use this, right? Discard to acquire a boon. Shoot a monkey. I was hoping that would... Uh... All right, well, we wasted our chance to recharge that. All right, a Desert Trapper, it's a seven. Uh, I can deal with that. You can only use one card against a Desert Trapper. The idea being, I guess, he traps you before you can put into play too many cards. Uh, we've got some good weaponry here. Let's see, this Icy Longspear is new for me. Uh, so this is a, a melee plus a D8 plus one. Here's a melee plus a D8. Uh, we add the cold trait. That doesn't really help us much. Um, if you would fail the check, you can discard it. So basically, we reveal this for a d8 plus 1, which I'm going to go ahead and do. If proficient with weapons, you may additionally discard this card to add 1 for each die rolled. All right. Uh, I like the Kukri better than the Kopesh. We're revealing that. So uh, his melee is a d10 plus 2. There's our plus 2. There's our d10. Now for the Icy Long Spear, there's our D8, there's our plus one. Defeated him. Uh, I would love to keep exploring, but I don't have any way to do it. Uh, so that's it. Uh, we now go to Damiel, uh, who's still drowning in quicksand. This is his blessing. Blessing of the elements is good. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't really matter. Well, it's good because it's a basic blessing. If we had saved this uh, to when this was showing, we could recharge this. But it doesn't help us now. All right, so uh, Damiel is going to encounter a card. If it is a 
Bane. We'll find out. And there's Damiel on the bottom. All right, it's a stupid crowbar. Oh, good lord. Uh, strength uh, is a D4. On a three or higher, we get a crowbar. No, we don't get a crowbar. We're gonna let it go back into the box. So it occurs to me there's no acid pool here because of course there was a mirage there <laughs> instead of the acid pool. Uh, so uh, yeah, we won't be running into an acid pool. So we still have to examine or encounter him. Uh, oddly enough, you can examine yourself. You can encounter yourself in this situation, uh, which I think we will go ahead and do with the Pomet Klansman. Uh, recharge this card to add, oh no, discard this card to explore your location. So I'm exploring Thorn Scrub, and uh, what do you know? I found myself. So Damiel is now in play, and the reason I want to do that is because when this location is empty, you can then attempt to close it. Closing Thorn Scrub, oh, and by the way, um, when your tokens return to the location, banish this card. So there are no cards, so I want to close this. Uh, all I have to do to close this is I am dealt one poison damage. Uh, and guess what? Elemental Treaty prevents that poison damage. Furthermore, I had this Crocodile Skin Lamellar that could have shrugged off poison damage as well. Actually, is that true? No, Crocodile Skin Lamellar does not shrug off poison damage. Fortunately, Elemental Treaties do. All right, so this is closed. Uh, let's see. Uh, when the location's closed, if you don't have either Arcane or Divine, banish it. Okay, so we need a Divine check of six. His Divine is a D8 plus two. I would love to put this back into my deck. I think I have two of them in there, though. We failed the heck out of that, so that gets discarded. All right, we reset his hand, which is just a matter of drawing one card. Great! I love all these Blessings of the Elements. Very handy against Acid Pools. Hey, let's move on to Estra, who, what does she have going here? This helps to acquire boons. The Caravanserai has no monsters. It's just got two barriers in it and a lot of uh, items and weapons and such. And its special ability is when you would encounter an item, draw one from the box instead, encounter one of them and banish one of them. So basically it's a, a buy two, get one free, no. Encounter one, encounter two free. <laughs> I'm not sure what the sign hung in front of the caravanser I would say, uh, but something to that effect. Uh, however, I don't think she wants to go there. So that leaves us the Howling Sands and the Sulfur Pits. Uh, I'd like to wait to go to the Sulfur Pits. Eh, it doesn't much matter. Uh, the Howling Sands, we recharge. Okay, so to close Howling Sands, you have to make a Dexterity or Acrobatics check. That's Drelm's job. Elves are notoriously uh, dexterous. So she's just going to go over to the Sulfur Pits. Uh, oh, we didn't draw her Blessing, right? Blessing of the Ancients, which means nothing, because we don't have any of the other ones in play. Uh, it would have meant these Pomet Clansmen would be recharged instead of discarded. Uh, now, let's see, because she is a seer, remember this, on your turn, you may recharge a spell to examine the top two cards in your location. If one's an undead, we can encounter it. So we could discard this. It's not, oh, she doesn't have much by way of combat, actually. She has nothing by way of combat. Uh, and there's three monsters lurking in here. Uh, let's see. This adds... A D6 and traits. She's a bit vulnerable. Do I really want to pass? That seems terrible. You know, let's go ahead and examine two cards. And then we can get, oh, actually, what does this do? Discard it to add one plus the scenario deck number. Okay, to any check to acquire or check to acquire. Okay. All right, let's just have a look and hope I don't regret it. Uh, all right, I am discarding a good omen spell. Uh, oh, no, I may recharge to examine the top two cards of your location deck. So I won't need to burn Honair to get this back in play. So let's recharge this spell and examine the top two cards, and now we are vulnerable to any trigger effects. Uh, a Death Hound. These guys are jerks. You have to make two seven checks. Uh, one of the commonly overlooked rules is that when you have multiple checks for one creature or barrier, uh, the character who encountered the, the card, the Bane card, only has to do one of the checks. 
other characters at that location can attempt the other checks. As long as the, the character who encountered it tries at least one of them, you can share the multiple checks amongst characters. Um, okay, the death hound will, uh, after you act, succeed it again. All right, so the stupid death hound, you have to make a constitution or fortitude check of eight. Uh, I guess it, uh, or you discard a card. And it's not even damage, it's just discard a card. Uh, nobody here has fortitude. Nobody here has great constitution. So basically, after fighting this, I'm going to have to discard a card. Uh, all right, so that's examining that one. Oh, interesting. So, fighting a death hound can lift a curse. You may banish a scourge displayed next to your deck. All right. So, if Amhotep defeats the death hound, uh, she can lift her curse, which might be worth doing. I mean, that's not super, it's just mildly inconvenient. All right, let's encounter the other card. Burning tar is terrible. So, Drelm can deal with this, uh, as well as Damiel. If undefeated, you're dealt fire damage. Bury any cards you would discard as damage. Wow. Burning tar is particularly painful. Uh, all right, we're putting the death hound up top. Oh, actually, we're not even changing the order. We can't do that. Uh, if either of them had been undead, and oddly enough, a death hound is not undead. It's a curse animal. I think we're done. Put this on top of your deck to draw a spell from your discard pile. Put it on top of your deck to add a d10 uh, to any strength, constitution, or perception check. Yeah, I think she's done for the time being. So let's recharge her hand. Good. Very happy with that. Uh, okay. All right. This is perfect. Uh, Blessing of Nethus. Discard to examine the top two cards of your exploration. Put them back in any order, then explore. After you play it, if it matches. All right, this is going to be this is going to be a very exciting turn. Uh, Amhotep is going to go fight a Death Hound in the Sulphur Pits. Right, uh, and then uh, she's going to use a Blessing of Nethus. It gets recharged. Uh, here we go. Exciting stuff's about to happen. So she moves to the Sulphur Pits. These guys are still hanging around in Thorn Scrub, even though it's closed. Remember, she can adjust her die rolls by two by discarding a card. Uh, let's see, anything we need to do first? I don't think so. Um, good, so let's just go ahead and get that stupid Death Hound into play. Uh, now, if the results to check Right, okay, so if we don't, if we, if we get a 7 or higher on both checks, we defeat the Death Hound. If we get an 11 or higher, we remove this Curse of Poisoning. However, if we don't get that 11 or higher, we take a Curse of Vulnerability, which I think just means you can't reduce damage, which sucks. Uh, so we need a 7 or higher. Estra can do one of the checks. And look what Estra has, a very effective spell. So uh, let's go ahead and... Discard this. Discard to add one die. All right, we're definitely going to be adding a die. So let's just work through this. Esther is going to be able to use that against a seven. Uh, at the sulfur pits, on any check that has the acid trait, add one die. So Amhotep's acid splash will be used there, which will be uh, arcane plus a d6. This is divine plus two d6. I think they're both in very good shape to do a great job against a Death Hound. Now we need an 11 or higher, remember that. We could recharge this. That's gonna get extra dice because of the Sulfur Pit, so I think that's fine. So just working this out. Uh, Amhotep's check against one of those is going to be Arcane D10 plus two, plus a D6. And because it's invoking acid, an additional die, which is another d10. All right, so that's what we'll need to get an 11 or higher. Fairly confident. And that's what she'll be rolling. Uh, I don't have ways to adjust that. Not that I can see. What if I used this to punch him? Uh, Arcane or Divine plus 2d4. But it's not going to add the acid die. 
this is just a strength or melee, uh, which is a D8. Okay, that's not optimal. Let's see, this could boost fire and electricity. That's neither of them. All right, so that's what she'll be rolling. Estra's Holy Light. <clears throat> Her Divine is a D12 plus two. And the Holy Light adds 2d6. If we had been dealing with, uh, if we'd been dealing with an undead creature, we would have uh, uh, added even more dice. Wow, Holy Light's very effective against the undead, as you might imagine. All right, so these need to be an 11 or higher. I'm confident we can do it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Do I want to burn these? I mean, it's not like. And it would get rid of this. We've closed two locations. We're doing fairly well. What would this help? Um, recharge to add a D6 uh, in a check against an outsider or undead. That's not going to help there. Oh, oh, Blessing of Nethys, right. Because we will recharge this rather than recycle it because it's our currently showing Blessing. Uh, discard it to add one die. We're definitely going to do that. Oh, to any check. All right. And we recharge rather than discard because the Blessing of Nethys is showing. So who needs a die? Uh, I don't know. So 5, 13, uh, 6, 12... Let's give it, I don't know if I'm mathematically, if that's mathematically sound, but I'm going to do that. And then he, I can put him on top to add strength. Okay, he's not going to help. I think that's what we're going with, right? Because she can then adjust this roll if it falls short. Actually, she can adjust this, so let's do that. So basically we need a nine or higher, a seven to defeat the, the Death Hound, uh, a nine or higher, which can be boosted to an 11 to stop from getting a curse of vulnerability and to furthermore discard the curse of poisoning. Let's go with this. Uh, who's gonna go first? Who wants the first check against the Death Hound? Uh, Estra, why don't you uh, have the honors? Except we add, we're adding a die with the Blessing of Nethys. So that's what we're rolling. Yep, easily got that. Okay, so there's, there's my interface mod to represent uh, one success. Good work, Estra. Now we check whether this is recharged or discarded. It's a divine check of eight, which is a D12 plus two. I'd love to hang on to this. Ah, so not. All right, well, fortunately, uh, On Air can draw this back out of the discard pile. All right, so the Acid Splash, it's, uh, yep, it's Arcane plus a D6. Because it's invoking Acid, it uses another die. Uh, really? That's it? We'll get to recharge it. I mean, it's just a splash, so it's like a minor uh, spell. It's basically a cantrip. It's an Acid cantrip. That didn't count. Here we go. Uh, we need an 11 or higher. That will do it. So if I was seeing the interface mod through, I would do that, and now it's defeated uh, because both rolls were 11 or higher. So therefore, rather than taking a Curse of Vulnerability, we get rid of the Curse of Poisoning, and we can now keep our full hand size. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Death Hound. Uh, shoot, I looked at this, didn't I, and forgot what it was. Uh, was it a Toxic Geyser? No, well, we'll find out. Uh, okay, now let's see if we recharge this. Uh, she's going to check her arcane. She needs a six or higher to recharge it. So a d10 plus two. Ah, barely. Now, there's nothing here that lets us keep going. Uh, so let's draw up to her hand size, which is two more because her hand size is six. Ah, a mummy cat, an ubashki which can help us explore, and a magnifying glass, which can also help us look through. Uh, magnifying glasses are awesome because you can explore the top card uh, and then decide to put it on the bottom of the deck if you don't like it. Uh, and that was everyone's turn, as it were. So let's get rid of these blessings. And let's draw a blessing for Drelm. 
Blessing of Bastet. We don't have that card in play. All right, where is he gonna go? So to close the Howling Sands, we would need a dexterity check. Uh, how dexterous is a half-orc cleric? D6, not very. So he's gonna join into the party at the Sulphur Pits. I'd love to be able to get an elemental treaty in play over there. Uh, should I scooch these over? I'm just gonna do that because there's no point hanging out at closed locations. Some closed locations continue to have an effect and it's written on the back of the card. These do nothing. All right, uh, Drelm at the Sulphur Pits. Uh, to close it, we're just gonna take a point of acid damage. Any checks that invoke acid add an additional die. Here we go, let's see what, what he finds. What will this do right? Do we wanna use a cure actually? One, two, three, four, five. Who else is taking more damage? No, four, three. I guess just to get it out of my hand. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Reveal this card, choose a character at your location, shuffle a D4 plus one cards into his deck. So a three, so that's four cards. So one, two, three, four, all right. Oh, there's our, both of our elemental treaties uh, have been discarded. All right, so four of these will get shuffled back in the deck. This is the one that won't be, all right, one of our elemental treaties, which is okay, because we've only got, uh, you know, we've got three locations left. All right, so this gets shuffled back in. Now, we check to see if we discard this. We need a divine check of eight, which for him, uh, oh, is it D8 plus three? I might have been doing that wrong and only giving him plus two. That is not a divine check of eight. Discarded cure. And let's explore. Burning tar, right, I knew that was there. All right, that's the one. All right, so uh, burning tar sucks. It's super painful. Don't get it on your skin. Uh, this would be a pain in the butt because I need a dexterity acrobatics perception or craft role. Uh, he doesn't have craft, he doesn't have perception, uh, he doesn't have acrobatics, so we would go to his dexterity, which is just a d6. Remember, half-orc clerics not known for their dexterity. However, Drelm, this particular half-orc cleric, whenever he encounters uh, something with the trait obstacle, he can use his divine. He adds his divine to the check. His divine, as we just saw, is a d8 plus three. So this half-orc cleric is uniquely suited to walk through bar burning tar. Let's give it a shot. Furthermore, let's see, if we do a wisdom, knowledge, or survival, oh, that doesn't help. Uh, the Osirian History Guard does not help you against burning tar. Okay, so his dexterity check is a d6. Oh, did he draw? Yes, it's Blessing of Bastet, which is not in play. And we need a six or higher, that's terrible. Uh, let's see. When you would discard a, no, wait, where is it? On your check against a card that has the obstacle trait, you may add your divine skill, a D8 plus three. All that I ask is that I don't roll two ones and then I'll be fine. Let's try it. Oh, I didn't even ask for that. That seems like a, no. I, I've overused my luck. Can we save that roll for later, please? <laughs> it's not quite boxcars, but close enough. All right, so we got past the burning tar. Um, and he has no way to continue exploring, so I believe that's it for him. Fill our hand back up to five. Nice, I like that. I like those a lot. We now draw a blessing for Damiel. Good, so that means we can recharge these two blessings if we use them this turn. Uh, and let's go over to the Howling Sands because he's particularly good at closing Howling Sands. Not particularly good, but better than anyone else. Uh, we only need to make a dexterity check of uh, four or better. So uh, here we go, Damiel into the Howling Sands. Let's see if there's anything I need to deal with. No, At the start of my turn, I'd have to discard anything that has cold. I don't have anything like that. Armored coat, 
I would like that very much. I need a constitution check of five, though. Uh, his constitution, uh, oh, it's a d8. Uh, he's pretty hearty for an elf. Nice. Let's, oh. Uh, Uh, normally, I, whenever I think I'm doing well and I have lots of time left, then all of a sudden I'm down to like three blessings. Uh, the clock runs out. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. Uh, I'm discarding it to keep exploring. Perfect. That paid off, right? I made the right call. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's now defeat an acid pool. Guess who's good at defeating acid pools? Not just half-orc clerics, but elf alchemists. So, uh, intelligence, craft, wisdom, or survival of nine. Guess who the only person, the only person in this party who has craft is Damiel. It's a d10 plus two, is that right? Uh, intelligence plus two, so yeah, d10 plus two. Here's what we're starting with against the acid pool. But I'm not done yet. Uh, let's then add, let's, we want to recharge this. What does this do? Blade Guard. Banish this card to add 1d12 to a check by a character at your location against a bane that invokes acid. So we could banish this, which because he's an alchemist would simply discard it. We could recharge this to add another d10. We could actually do both. Uh, and there's still... Two more acid pools in play. Let's go ahead and recharge this because, use this because it's recharged, not discarded. So that adds another d10. That's the non dumb d10. And I don't want to stop there, so let's recharge this to add one die to any check that involves elements such as acid. All right. Surely we can get a nine or better out of that, right? Of course. It's plus two. These just have to add up to seven. <laughs> that was way too close. Uh, all right. Seven, eight, nine. Shoot him on, yeah. Uh, all right, so uh, the acid pool is defeated. Uh, have I put acid pools in with the regular barriers? Uh, yes, I have. That doesn't go there. Uh, now to close the Howling Sands. And by the way, uh, okay, I don't want to get too cocky. If we close, well, there you go. Uh, to close the Howling Sands, we need a dexterity check. Nobody has acrobatics here of four or higher. Uh, him being an elf, his dexterity is a d10. Uh, four or higher. This is, let's recharge this. I feel like you may recharge a card that has the alchemical trait to add a d4 to a combat check. That doesn't help. You may recharge uh, to add a die to a card, a check that invokes acid or poison. That doesn't help. Um, that does not discard to any check to acquire a boon. I don't think we want to burn that. She can't do anything. It's just a four or, or higher, right? That's not too hard to do. All right, we have closed the Howling Sands. Howling Sands sounds like the name of a motel. Uh, falling rubble was avoided. Camels and porcupines. So is a camel an ally or an item? Of course a camel is an ally. Camel's not an item. A ghost scorpion didn't get us. Unshakable chill is a basic spell. Big whoop. A hyena. A healer's kit. Eh, it might have been nice in a yellow jelly. And uh, when closed, no effect. So I'm just gonna do that there and just move him over here to these closed things. Let's just bring these locations in a bit. All right, I think we're doing well. I don't wanna jinx it. Uh, 
Uh, let's draw a blessing for Estra. Oh, let's fill up his hand to five. Anything else we want to do? No. If I had a camel, I could travel uh, at, and could I travel and then explore? You know what? I'll look that up later. Uh, oh, blessing for Estra. Good. So let's see. So we definitely want to use this this turn, right? Where did all of our cards go? They went to help Amhotep fight. Uh, on your turn, you can recharge a spell to use her seer ability, but she doesn't have a spell. We could get a spell by putting him on top of my deck. And let's actually do that in case we encounter some nasty creature. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, the crocodile, this crocodile skin helmet will protect us against the acid that spews out when we close the sulfur pits. All right, so he's going to go on top of the deck and we'll take holy light. Uh, let's go ahead and recharge the Osirian Ancestor. It'll let us look at the top card and then put it on top of the deck or on the bottom. Unless, of course, it's a trigger card, in which case its effect fires off. All right, what has the Osirian Ancestor showed us? Blessing of the Ancients. Don't mind if I do. Uh, so let's encounter it. Uh, divine of three. Uh, I automatically make that because her divine is a d12 plus two. Uh, there's no way, you know, believe me, I've tried. There's no way you can roll a zero. So here's the question. Do we discard this to keep going and then hopefully use this? Discard this to examine the top card of your location. Oh, let's do that. Discard this to examine the top card of your location. You may then explore your location and you get one die to acquire boons. And uh, because it matches the blessing in play, we will recharge it. All right, let's examine this card. Hope we don't get bushwhacked by a trigger effect. Nope. So a shock elemental. I think I can take that guy with holy light, right? He's an outsider. It's almost like being undead. Um, no. Okay. All right. So uh, we recharge this. We now explore a shock elemental. The shock ele elemental is immune to electricity, mental, and poison. All damage dealt by it is electricity damage. If you play a weapon that doesn't have bludgeoning, the difficulty is increased by two. You apparently have to use a club to bludgeon the shock elemental into submission. All right, so her holy light against a shock elemental. What was the thing that was effective against undead and outsiders? It's not holy light. I forgot what that was. All right, her holy light is a uh, divine plus two. It's a d12 plus two. We need a nine or higher. We're not using a weapon, by the way, so we don't have to worry about that uh, requirement for a bludgeon. And uh, 2d6. It's not undead, so we don't get the plus 2d12 instead. Uh, we'll be able to do a divine check to keep it. Shoot, I don't know. That looks good, right? I think we can do this. We did it. Uh, now we check whether this is recharged. We need a divine check of eight. Not recharged in the least. Well, on air, her husband will help bring it back into play. Uh, and let's refill her hand. I'm going to hang on to this for now. Oh, look, it's on air. Uh, and now let's draw the blessing for Amhotep. Nice. Uh, Amhotep. Do we want to use the magnifying glass? Recharge this to examine the top card of your deck. You may then shuffle the deck. Is there anything? Uh, and this is when you examine a card that has the trigger effect. Bury this card to ignore any power that happens when you examine it. Uh, Ubashkis are mummy cats that protect you from ambushes. Okay, so let's recharge this to look at this, and then we can shuffle the deck if we want. And if it's triggered, we can use our mummy cat to avoid its effect. 
shoot. Yeah, there's no point. Yeah, I'm going to shuffle the deck. Because really, it's just, it's in my way. All right, so here we go. We're shuffling this. Uh, and she still hasn't done her normal explore, by the way. Uh, she doesn't have a card, a spell to discard to do her seer ability or spiritual ability. So here we go. Let's just explore. A Tomb Raider. Uh, let's see. Charisma, diplomacy. Her diplomacy is a D10 plus one. She's fairly charismatic. You might not realize it by looking at the picture. Did I not refill his hand? Oh, no, no. I've used blessings, right? Okay. Uh, D10 plus one. Uh, hey, Tomb Raider, you want to come with me? Yes, you do. Now, let's discard the Tomb Raider to explore. Viper Strike, I would like that spell. Uh, divine plus eight, I get that spell. Oh, no, no. My divine, is, her divine is only plus two. Drum's divine is plus three. All right, if, let's see if we get this. Yes. Uh, do I dare discard it to look at the next two cards? Oh, I'm playing the wrong person's turn, aren't I? Shoot a monkey. Oh, I've cheated. I've totally cheated. Why didn't you guys tell me I was playing the wrong turn? Uh, okay, how do we back this up? I don't think we can. Is that right? Yeah, because I drew her blessing. I think we just have to end this turn and pretend it never happened and s do I give and then skip her turn shoot yeah uh, let's just to, to get let's let's just end all turns I, I mean we, we screwed up so uh, here we go we're gonna end all turns right yeah Ugh, what was I thinking why didn't you guys tell me If I actually beat the scenario this time, I'm going to feel a little bad. All right, so we are back to Drelm's Blessing Draw. He's going to explore. He's got weapons. Acid Pool. Good. All right, so his dexterity, we've done this before, is a d6. He adds his wisdom, which is a d8 plus three, to check against obstacles. And blessing of the elements, I think we'll add another die by recharging this. Let's see, yeah, this does not help you. So the other die we add is a d6. All right, so we need a nine or higher. Yikes. Okay, we got it. Uh, all right, this is defeated. If we want to close this location, which we do, we just take a point of acid damage. He doesn't have any armor to shrug that off, but he will discard, I guess, that stupid weapon there. And then now this is closed. We have two locations left. What do we miss out on? Uh, all right, nothing too, nothing too fun or terrible. And oh, I guess I should leave that to show where everyone is. Uh, and we fill his hand up to five. And now we draw a blessing for Damiel. Blessing of Horus, and he's of course going to go to the Caravansary. We just have to close this, and then we can pin down the Mirage. All right, let's draw from the Caravansary. Uh, remember items, we get to draw another one from the box and choose which one we want to deal with. Camouflage Pit Trap. Yeah. Now you will note, uh, much to my chagrin, a half orc cleric is no good against a camouflaged pit trap because you'll see it's a trap and not an obstacle. I mean, frankly, a camouflaged pit trap, I think it would be an obstacle, but nope, in this game, it's only a trap. Uh, okay, so Drelm dealing with a camouflage pit trap, he has to make a wisdom or perception roll. 
uh, now's the time that Oner, this would only be your, yeah, Oner's not going to, her undead husband isn't going to help anyone else. Uh, Blessing of Horus, we have nothing that matches, although this will recharge. Um, shoot a monkey, let's see. The good news is there's only one more barrier other than this one in the Caravanserai. Caravanserai, 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 let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> I have no idea how to pronounce that word. It's a word that I've seen written and never had to say out loud until today. Uh, oh, no, wait, we need two checks. Oh, no, or, or, right, okay, settle down, okay. So wisdom of six or dexterity of seven. Uh, his wisdom is a d6, his dexterity is a d10. We will try that one. Uh, if undefeated, each character at your location takes a d4 combat damage, then end your turn. If defeated, you may explore your location. I'm happy to hear that, so let's defeat it. All right, a d10, we need a seven. A braver man might just go ahead and roll. I'm not a braver man. Let's see what we can do about this. <laughs> not a whole lot. Uh, it doesn't involve acid or anything an alchemist could use. So I think the only thing we can do is have Drelm's Blessing of Abadar add another die. Now normally you would discard this. Oh, discard to add two dice to any check to defeat a barrier. Now, a camouflage pit trap might not be an obstacle, but you'll note it is a barrier. So, uh, Drelm's special ability, being a half-orc cleric, is he discard, or recharges cards with the Abadar trait instead of discarding them. So that goes to the bottom of his deck. And now we add two dice, and now I like these odds much better. Uh, seven or better. We can do that. There we go. All right, and now look, if defeated, you may explore your location. Don't mind if I do. Well, there's, there's our other barrier. Uh, okay, this is a painful one because it is two checks. Um, okay, so we need dexterity, basically. Oh, perception. No, he doesn't have perception. Yeah, we need a dexterity of four, doable-ish. Uh, and then a dexterity of seven. If the result of the first check to defeat exceeds the second check, you take a d4 damage. Then recharge your, then you just go straight to the end of your turn. Uh, shoot. All right, well, the good news is it's an obstacle, so once uh, Drown gets over here, we can deal with it. Shoot. All right, so uh, let's see, there's nothing, yeah, I've, I've used all of my options. There's no acid, no poison involved. Nobody has any blessings. Uh, there's no blessings of Bastet to reroll dice. So we are putting ourselves in the hands of regular naked bare D10 rolls. All right, here's the first roll. We need a four or higher. Good, because if the results of the first check are higher than the results of the second check, then we take damage. Now let's see, if we fail, so I think if now we don't hit a seven, this just gets shuffled back into the deck, uh, right? Yeah, it's just if the results of the first check exceed the results of the second check, you are dealt a D4, then recharge your hand. So then we would just fail, yeah, yeah. So this only kicks off if, oh, if the results of the first check, yeah, if we get a one, two, or three, then we uh, take damage. And we banish this then, right? No, because we haven't defeated it, because we failed the check to defeat it. All right, well, ideally we're getting to seven, eight, nine, or 10. Ah, okay, here we go. Which die do I want? I don't like this funky die, it's not part of the set. Here we go. Uh, okay, now Damiel has nothing to extend his turn, so we reset his hand up to five. Good, I love those. Uh, and Ezra, Estra, not Ezra, by the way. Ezra, entirely separate character in this universe. Estra draws her blessing. All right. Let's come over to the Caravan Sarai, knowing that there are no barrier, or, well actually there's one, there's a, a poison, or an acid pit in there, but otherwise they're all friendly cards, they're all boons that we can acquire. Um, 
So I kind of think like there's no point examining. Yeah, I think there's no point examining without exploring, right? Because the acid pit doesn't have a trigger effect. Uh, there's one item in this in this game that has a trigger effect, but it, it's sort of odd, very specific. Uh, so let's just do regular ex exploring. Uh, doing one? No, it's not basic. We'll save this. All right, regular exploring. There is an item, Ring of the Godless. During your encounter, recharge to gain divine wisdom plus two. Characters may not. Oh, so it gives someone who doesn't have the divine trait, the divine trait. Ring of the Godless, of course. All right, her wisdom uh, check she needs to make a five. Her wisdom is a d12. Got it. Goes in your... Oh, shoot. You know what I forgot to do? Let's just... Hold on. Let's back up. I'm supposed to draw another card out of the deck and then choose which one to deal with. Yeah, this is basic. There's no way I would have messed with that. So I'm sticking with what I rolled. Uh, okay, to keep going. Recharge him, okay. Yeah, this will be good to give to someone, I guess. Who has a high wisdom but no divine? Not Amhotep. No, no one, really. All right, well, let's go ahead and discard this to keep powering through this deck. Oh, uh, okay, that's not the card. I didn't know about this card. This is new to me. Trigger, Hyena Dawn. When you examine this card, you may reveal an ally that has the animal trait to acquire it. Oh, okay, so if we had an animal with us, the animal could just go make friends with the Hyena Dawn and it would come join us. Uh, she doesn't have an animal friend. You'll note, on air, not an animal. When you defeat a monster, you may reveal this card to recharge a random card from your discard pile. I like that. The hyena don heals you up. Discard this to examine the top card of your location. You may. I want this guy. All right. So wisdom is this plus two. Come on, I can do this, right? Oh god, stupid hyena don. All right, goodbye. Oh, hopefully we'll meet again. Uh, and then just draw her hand up, and it's full because she picked up this Ring of the Godless. So uh, we move on. Um, Hotep. Uh, let's see. What do we want? Do we want to use the, the Ubashki? When you examine a card that has a trigger trait, recharge to reduce damage, discard to explore. Well, we'll see. Let's do our regular exploration. An acid jet, uh, arcane of six to acquire it. Her arcane is a d10 plus two. There's seven or one, that's a seven. So we acquired an acid jet. Uh, and I guess discard, because right, we want to keep moving. Hey, Dice, quit getting into Amhotep's um, discard pile. You guys stay in your own area. Uh, let's discard this to keep exploring. Yeah, that wasn't an item, that was a spell. A compass is an item, so we are now going to draw another item from the deck. I like the compass. I'm probably going to hang on to that if that's what I draw. Uh, all right. The acid... Did I just not shuffle that? No, I didn't. All right. Okay, a four higher on a wisdom or survival. Her wisdom is just a d6. Yep, we have a compass. Uh, now discard this to explore your location. Another compass. This place is lousy with compasses. All right, let's look at another item. The crowbar. We will not deal with the stupid crowbar. All right, so we just roll another d6. Uh, she doesn't, she's not wielding dual compasses, I'm afraid. And that's as far as she can push it, right? Yeah. Uh, all right, so fill her hand back up to six. Acute senses, what does that one do? Display this card next to a character's deck. While displayed, they get plus one to perception checks. After you explore, you can examine the top card of your location deck at the end of your turn. Okay, so it just gives you an extra examination and a bonus to exploring. And then it gets discarded at the end of the turn. Uh, divine six, it's relatively easy to recharge. All right, get rid of everyone's blessings. 
And then Drelm is going to come over here to the Caravanserai. I'm pretty sure we got this. I probably shouldn't say that. Blessing of Wadjet. Flaming Heavy Pick plus one. I want that. Or do I? Uh, pick Melee Piercing Magic Elite. Ah! Strength or uh, I need a melee check of 12 to acquire it. Mm. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength or melee d6 plus one. Oh, you may additionally discard it to add another d6 in the fire trait. If any d6 rolled on this is a six, count it as a seven. Eh, all right. Well, let's see. Uh, if I had a blessing of Wadjet, I could have an easier time getting it, but I don't, right? Don't want to burn that, really. Um, all right. Uh, let's see, could he get a, a melee strength? Oh, yeah, yeah, so if I get a 12, I acquire it. Nope. All right, goodbye, flaming heavy pick plus one. Certainly looks cool. Uh, and I believe that's it for Drelm's turn. We've got two more cards. One of these is an acid pool, right? Uh, so, shoot, I would like him to get the acid pool. I don't have any way to... Oh, oh, ah! Let's put this into play. Oh, I'll do it. Yeah, let's put this into play. Um, shoot. Let's not. Uh, let's... Yeah, because we're not going to take damage from the acid pool, right? Right? Uh, okay, and saying this can help against the acid pool. Good. Uh, now, remember, there's still an acid pool in the quarry, which we might run into. All right, so we're going over to Drelm's, uh, Damiel's turn. Uh, Blessing of Wadjet again. Dual Wadjets. Stupid Cloak. Constitution of Fortitude of 6. Uh, D6. No, wait. Constitution is a D8, right? Remember, he's a hardy elf. Okay, I acquire this. And let's get the acid pit. Acid pool, excuse me. Not a pit, a pool. Uh, all right, so he's going to need to make a craft roll, which for him is a d10 plus 2. I will use the blade guard, which normally gets banished, but his ability is when you would banish a card that has the alchemical trait, you may discard it instead. Uh, adds a d12 to a check at a location against a bane that invokes acid. An acid pool certainly does that. Okay, for a 9 or higher... Oh, and to close it, I need to banish an item. Shoot a stupid monkey. Well, so he's not going to be able to close the location. It's going to have to wait till Estra's turn. Um, and we still have to beat this at any rate. Uh, I don't think there's anything I can do. Estra can't, yep. All right, nine or higher. Okay, got it. If I had an item to banish, I could close the Caravanserai. Instead, I'm going to waste one turn. Uh, it gives us a while. Okay, I think I still think we're okay. There's no need to panic yet. Did I not fill his hand up? Oh, no, right. I used it. Okay, there. Uh, all right, and that's the end of his turn. Do I want to discard stuff? I don't need to be running around with three armors. Let's do that. Uh, uh, let's see. Acid combat or electricity. Cold combat, electricity or poison. Acid, cold combat or electricity. Uh, I think we might hang on to the coat. Banish to reduce it to zero. I think we're going to... Uh, if you're proficient in light armors... Get rid of these. I'm going to discard those and then fill up my hand to five. One, two, three. All good. Ah, there. Why, why are you waiting so late to come into play, stupid canteen? All right, draw a blessing for Estra, who is not going to go anywhere, which is a shame. Uh, do we have an item? No, because we were to go over here and get the, uh, the and, and encounter the Mirage, this would still be open. It could run off, but we don't want to do that. So uh, just for her turn, she's going to hang out. Uh, at the end of the turn, you can uh, check to close the location. Let me verify that. Yeah, after your explore action, you can check to close the location. Uh, it's just banish an item. Oh, is it banish? It is banish. Oh, man. That means put back in the box. I kind of wanted to keep that ring. 
You know what? I don't know anybody who would have used it anyway, so I'm going to pretend I don't mind. And it, actually, I don't mind because I don't think it would have taken up a valuable item slot for any of these characters. Yeah, so what do I care? I was going to get rid of it anyway. The Caravanserai is now closed for business. And that was her turn. Uh, and Amhotep, getting a start on the quarry. We'll remove this. It was just reminding me that the Mirage is over there. Let's just put this in a nice assumes. Okay, I've messed up the order of the cards. Right there. All right, everybody's at the quarry. We can remember that. Oh, no, no, no. Right now, only she's at the quarry. You guys are all over here at the Caravanserai, which is closed. Uh, okay, nothing I need to do before my turn. Let's just explore. A ghost battling ring. Uh, very specific against the undead, right? Uh, yeah, there aren't a lot of undead at this point. I presume there will be later. Uh, I've actually found this before and then had to put it back because nobody wanted to carry it around. All right, an arcane of eight for her. That's a D10 plus two. There's the plus two. There's the D10. All right. Back in the box. Uh, nothing that can let me... Oh, let's go ahead. Display this card next to a character's deck. So we're going to do this because it then gives us more room in our hand. Uh, none of this. Let's just redraw. All right. Do we want to discard anything? No, we're good. So let's just draw one more card to fill up her hand. Filter hood, nice bit of armor. All right, I th think I think there's no way. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to jinx it. All right, uh, Drelm moves over here to join Amhotep and draws a blessing of the elements. And what does he run into? Magha Three Fingers. She's a fellow orc. Could this be a romance option? On your check after the roll, recharge this card to add three or subtract two from the result. <gasps> I want her. I want her to join us. Unfortunately, uh, orcs aren't known for their charisma. I need to roll a d6 to get an eight. Shoot, is it worth burning cards? No, I can't this late. Oh, she would be so much fun to have along. A half-orc ranger. All right, I failed that check. Uh, and nothing, oh, let's put this into play. Uh, nothing to extend my exploration, so draw my hand up. Kukri, good, I need that. Oh, good, if we run into the acid pool. Yeah, so this can be used to in, for anyone at the location. Uh, if you've got a potion, uh, you can just hand it over to someone. All right. Samuel drawing, a blessing of the elements as well. Exploring. I don't like how many cards are in here. Okay, let's put this into play. Uh, all this does is whenever I banish a potion, it stacks up here. All right. Desert Trapper, I can only use one card to fight him. Uh, the Sling Staff. For your combat check, reveal this card to use Dexterity or Ranged plus a D6. You may discard this card to add your Strength die. His Strength is just a D4. If proficient with weapons, which he is, you may discard this card and banish an item with the Alchemy trait to add 2D6. Oh, to a, to a trait, so you can sling it, I say, a ranged weapon. You can add that to a, a, ch a check by a, a character at your location. Is it a combat yet? check? Yeah, just a combat check. All right, uh, we need a 7, uh, so a d10 plus 2, plus a d6, uh, and is it even going to come around to him? Yes, it will once. Uh, let's go ahead and discard it for the strength die, just to be safe. There we go. We need a seven or higher. As long as I don't get three ones, I'm okay. All right, I'm okay. Oh, that's... Uh, do I want to do... Oh, and that's gone. Oh, uh, shoot. Let's see. If I keep exploring... So let's see, there's three monsters in here. 
So I think that's just one. How many cards are left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it was 11 because uh, it was 11 because we put the uh, Mirage in there. <clears throat> I feel like, all right, well, let's go ahead and do this, by the way. <clears throat> Uh, choose a character at your location and shuffle a D4 random cards from your discard pile into your deck. So that's four. Good. I think we're not going to keep exploring. Shoot, does anyone else have any way to keep exploring? They don't, do they? Oh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. These did not, so we're putting back in our deck armor, a couple blessing elements, and a coat. Uh, we banish this card, but when we have a canteen in play, we put it on top of there. And then later we can bury the canteen to put all the potions on the canteen into our hand. Very handy. I really feel like we should. Uh, and we won't have to close this, by the way. Oh, if we run into the acid pool, we can then close it to get rid of all the cards but the villain. So we might have to close it. You know what? I'm going to sit tight. Yep, I'm going to keep going. I hope I don't regret this. All right. Estra, come over with the blessing of Nethys. All right, so we're all assembled at the quarry. It has an elemental treaty in play. Here we go. Oh, you know what? Here we go. On your turn, you may recharge your spell to examine the top two cards. Let's recharge this. Before we do this, I'm going to put him on top of my deck to pull a spell out of my discard pile. I'm going to take Holy Light. He goes on top of my deck. Then I'm going to recharge Viper Strike to examine the top two cards of the location deck. Nice. Oh, although let's see. If we beat it, yeah, if we beat it, we close the location. And oh, we still have, oh, trigger. When you examine or encounter it, if any other location is open, uh, it runs off. Look, no other location's open. We still have to examine this. Uh, a torch. And we will use my interface mod of putting these upside down to show that we have seen them. So this is just going to be a wisdom check or perception check of seven. Unfortunately, we got rid of on air, who would have given us an extra D10 to a perception check. Uh, this right here can help a wisdom check. Uh, and nobody has perception, by the way. Well, actually, so I have to keep going. Yeah, OK, this is going to help. So I have to keep going, because she has no way to continue to explore. So fill up her hand. Uh, Onair does come back into play. Uh, we are now going to have, so this will be uh, Amhotep, the blessing of Nephis. She can adjust her, uh, her role. Uh, this we've totally got. All right, wisdom or perception, we need to get a seven. She has acute senses, by the way, uh, which would add one to a, add one die to a perception check. So her wisdom is a D6, but her perception would be a D4, because if your character doesn't have an ability or a skill, it's just always a D4. And we use acute senses to add another D4. So this is a perception check. Let's see, when you do that, after that character... And display while displayed. Oh, the whole thing just stays out there and adds an additional perception or die. All right, what else can we do? Uh, let's go ahead and discard this to add another die, which is D4. Uh, let's, uh, the Osirian History Guide, uh, recharge this card to add one die to Wisdom, Knowledge, or Survival. Oh, shoot. thought this would help. So let's see if we instead went with wisdom. That would be a d6, 2d6. All right, we're going to have to do the wisdom route. So forget perception. We're going to roll wisdom. We need a 7 or higher on wisdom. Her wisdom is a 6. That blessing that I discarded is another d6. The Osirian History Guide. Recharge this card. 
recharge this card to add one die to a wisdom knowledge or survival non-combat check I would say that encountering a mirage is non-combat at your location, which uh, everybody's there. So recharging this. Now, I'm gonna have to look up a rule because what I don't know, I know that each character can only add one card. You can add multiple items, right? Like I can use this thing twice. They each have their own copy to look up, hey, how do you know something's a mirage? Because uh, you can do that with blessings. All right, I'm gonna have to verify that real quick. Well, I don't see anything that says I can't use the same copy, the same card twice. I know you can't use like different powers from a card, but uh, so I think I'm okay in, in recharging this to add a D6. Oh, there we go. So we need a seven or higher. What else can I do? Uh, it's a wisdom check. Uh, ghosts don't help you with wisdom. Uh, she can't do anything. Oh no, she's the one doing it. Uh, that won't help. I think that's the best we can do. Here we go. For the win, I just need to get a seven or higher on four D6s. Anybody can do that, come on. Easy peasy. So we have just uh, won the scenario. Uh, and now we go through the whole process of going through our loot. Here comes the fun part. So I'm not sure how daunting that seems to you. Uh, as you can tell, of course, there's a lot of detail. Uh, there are lots of rules exceptions. There are lots of card interactions. But one thing to keep in mind that I feel makes it particularly suitable for solitaire play is for the most part, you are only ever dealing with one location, one card, and one character deck at a time. There are exceptions to this, and the developer, Mike Selinker, his, his most recent game, it's outside of the Pathfinder license, it's called Apocrypha, uh, plays much more with the interactions of cards and characters when it is not a particular player's turn. Um, it also cleans up the rules a lot, uh, relies a lot more on iconography, uh, consistent terminology. Uh, it's more streamlined, but it emphasizes interaction much more. But that, I feel, makes Pathfinder manageable even with four characters. You're only ever dealing with the one card from the one location with the one character deck, uh, with some exceptions. So I hope this has been helpful. If you're actually interested in a more critical commentary on how the game holds up, uh, check out my review at quarter3.com. And thank you so much for watching.